Hello, everyone. This is the weekly meeting of the Franco Sweater Knitters, and I'm Frank Jernigan. I think I forget to say that most times. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to our meeting. Come join us when you can. And hello to everyone. Hi, Wally. Hi, Frank. Hi, Sidra. Hi, Frank. Hi, Judith. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sumner. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Hello, everyone. Hi, Ron. Hello, everyone. So I'm in South Carolina this week, uh, visiting my friend who had uh, a hip replacement surgery about three weeks ago. Oh, wow. And if you remember when I was in Florida, I was going to come. It was like a week after his surgery. I was going to come help take care of him. But he couldn't uh, move for about a week. He had to stay with his aunt, who he had to have somebody with him around the clock, and I couldn't do that. Mm. So I didn't come then, and I waited a couple of weeks, and now here I am. We're having a nice weekend together. He's he's recovering enough to be able to walk around without crutches or uh, a cane, a huh. little bit of a limp. Wow, wow good. But, That's great. You know, it occasionally is quite painful and still mm -hmm. of course it's just been a few weeks anyway he's doing fine i'm happy to be here and see him now like you came for the weather <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's 80 degrees here ah on the coast of south carolina wow nice so mm -hmm. We went out for lunch and then took a walk around town and I got really hot wearing blue jeans. He was wearing shorts. Yeah. 80 degrees is too hot for long pants if you're going to be outside. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> Even what are we going to get? You're going to get 40 degrees next week on spring. Oh, you can bust up with short pants. Yeah. <laughs> 40 is about my limit. <laughs> Even in 100 degree weather, my husband would wear long jeans and long sleeve shirts. Yeah. Always. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody else doing? Good. We're doing. Good. The weeks go by fast. Oh, hi, Cindy. You came in after I greeted everyone. Hi, Frank. Has anybody heard from Kathy? No. No, not since Thursday. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, and she oh, texted she me power. a couple more times, and she didn't have power, and she didn't have internet, and oh. then uh, she texted me Friday, I guess, and she said the power was back on, but they still didn't have internet, and um, they were supposed to be getting more snow. Mm -hmm. Wow. This they was got a really bad storm? storm. Yeah, that they had um, uh, more than a more than a foot that Thursday morning and so mm. she wasn't able to to join us on the thing we kind of um she texted it back and forth with me a couple of times and asked if people had questions and things but um it wasn't and then she sent a picture and it was just like oh my gosh this does not look like March <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty deep mm. but I hope she had heat and stuff. Yeah. Yes, I, I missed your, her, she didn't. Your, your clocks changed last week, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Ours don't change for another two weeks, so I missed the Thursday meeting. Well, I, I did try and oh, join, goodness. but it was uh, too late. Oh, goodness. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I see you've got your Swift sitting there where you're winding some yarn. Oh, so we we are um, having a carpet laid tomorrow in the lounge. So half of the lounge is emptied here in the dining room. Um, yes, and that that's my. I was winding yarn earlier, so that's 
my husband made that for me. So it's lovely. Uh, it works, works great. It works great. Very nice. Yes. Yeah. So everything is all topsy turvy. So I think I saw Ron stuffing one of his chickens. Cindy, you need to share your chicken. <laughs> Oh well, mine's not. Have you gotten any further? Mine's not. I haven't gotten any further. I'm still. I've. I have less than one inch left on the sleeves for the happiness, um, and then <laughs> all the knitting will be done on that. So I'm just like making myself. Of, you cannot knit on anything else until this mm -hmm. is done. Yeah. <laughs> yes, today. I did, I, right. Today is stuffing day. Yes. So I finished all the knitting for all the chickens yesterday. Today is seaming and stuffing. So I'm on to my last chicken and ran out of stuffing. Ah. So, so I, what what do you look for? I mean, how do you search for stuffing? What what do you call it? Chicken stuffing? Fiber fill? <laughs> you don't call it chicken stuffing. Chicken stuffing. <laughs> I would stuff chicken probably with um uh, parsnips, I like parsnips. <laughs> mm. Yeah, a little, a little giblets leeks and some are, Leeks are good. Leeks are good. Leeks. Too. Mm. Love leeks. And it's springtime. <laughs> hey, so. in, in spite of all of my silliness, you said fiber fill. Fiber fill. Fiber, 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 fill. fiber fill. Polyester stuffing. Okay. I think I'm going to try stuffing mine, stuff which, is, which is wool. I have yeah, wool that I use for small things, um, but this is the super bulky chicken. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, that's, that's, that. that. oh that's, that's a lot bigger than mine. That's, that's a lot, lot of wool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lot bigger chicken. than mine. Look at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> lovely. I do like that. Had a blowout. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, look but, at the size of that thing. Here, I'll show I'll show you the others since I'm here. A lot of comfort. Um, yes. Okay, here they are. Do they have names? That's really important, Ron. <laughs> well, that was super bulky chicken. <laughs> There's bulky <laughs> chicken. <laughs> That's a nice look one. That. That's a nice one. Yeah, yeah, the colors are nice. Yeah, this is yeah. um, the super bulky chicken is in Andiamo by Jody Long. Oh, uh -huh. there's, a, there's a two color Andiamo, the super bulky version. Mm -hmm. This is Entropy Bulky by Feeder Book Farms. Worsted chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Very good. It, it kind of looks like a California white. It actually yeah, does. Yeah, it looks like a California that, white. That's I why I did the those. marled bands mm -hmm. on the neck. And this would be the like way. a California white. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It so, definitely looks um, like that. This is Jody Long's Alba Aaron, and then two strands of differently colored Alba, uh, the regular Alba, sport weight Alba, held together here to match the gauge. Very nice. And then we yeah. have DK chicken. <laughs> it's uh, it's made of um, cirrus by Juniper Moon Farms. It's an incredibly soft cotton. This oh, is that's cirrus nice jacket, mm -hmm. which has like <clears throat> self patterning bits. <laughs> oh. That's cute. This is sport weight chicken. <laughs> um, and it's made of artesano. By Jody Long. Mm -hmm. And then um, finally, tiny mm -hmm. fingering weight chicken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, this is made of, I think, online super sock uh, cotton. It's Ooh. a cotton mm -hmm. sock yarn. So that's my chickens range from. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot. I can see, I can see I, uh, why you would not stuff your large ones with wool. Yeah, that's too much wool. That batting. would take a huge bunch. Too much. So yeah. I, I asked him for stuffing, and he brought me the wool batting. You know, <laughs> um, I can stand so, stuff this with. I have a question. 
do those all have the same number of stitches and you just change the thick the weight of the yarn? Or do you use a different number of stitches? <laughs> yeah, they're identical. Uh, the pattern's identical. So I just followed the pattern with- Same number of stitches in all the of them. Same number of stitches and then uh, a, a relatively uh, sized needle. Yeah. Um, so they're worked on, this is on a one, and then this one is on an 11. Mm. Wow. Oh no, he's been stabbed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of, oh, he's bleeding seeming, a little bit there. Seeming garter stitch. And so you can see how they're constructed. They've got short rows all throughout. This is all seat garter stitch seams. Sometimes you're seaming rows to cast ons. You're seaming cast ons to bind offs. There's all kinds. Of, it's a seaming sampler. And here's Tim. He's stuffed too. Finally, my chicken journey is nearing completion. So oh, it's very cute. Very, very cute. Wow, and that's that's great. Great chicken. Oh, um, on, on kind of the subject of chicken, Cindy, my, my sister has decided to uh, terrorize her neighbors by getting a bunch of turkey necks. Oh, that will definitely <laughs> oh, do God. it. Yeah, they're like a, a bald neck and head right. with little vulture they're, chickens. They're really, they're really weird looking. And they're my, nice my chickens. sister hopes to uh, trick one of her like her her yard caretakers into thinking something terrible's happened to her chicks on her watch. <laughs> once, once they fledge and they've got their people, weird heads. people will believe that people will believe that yeah and to the tune of horrifying looking chickens but it's funny because the last time i was here i think i brought those chickens up and completely independently my sister decided to go get some well every once in a while they'll have them at the feed store or something and you'll see them available and people will either be attracted or repulsed depending yeah. on yeah. That's, that's the sort of thing I like. I like walking that edge between what is this thing? I love it. <laughs> Why do you even have this? It's awful. Let's get three. It's like who invented <laughs> this? You know? Right. Uh, so one day an ugly chicken was born and then it stayed that way. And I thought, you know what? Let's keep it. Well, I wonder if they didn't do it. Some of the some of the breeds have been bred to have really a little bit fewer feathers, so yeah. they were easier to pluck, yeah, and clean. And so ah. you know they kind of have done that mm -hmm. as well. Is sometimes they bred them to have an inordinate amount of feathers and feathers all over yeah, their the, legs yeah, and chickens. everything yeah. else. That it's like, like it's like just like early Elton John. All the heck. How the heck do they keep themselves clean? This is this is so impractical. Okay, I'm done with chickens. <laughs> well, I'll show my pieces. Jenny did, or Judith did one. You've got I breasts and thighs. Yeah. Well, I have the I have the tail, and then I have the stomach. And for mine, I wanted it to be anatomically correct, Ron. And <laughs> looking at the pattern, the, the tails all went straight or kind of down. And that is not wow. the way that a hen's tail goes. So I yeah. added extra short rows and changed it a little bit so that um, it goes up. It's going to yeah. go up. And I like then I also did um, that all this part and then the sewing together. And the beginning of, of the uh, the body is all one color. And then the head and the stomach will be the same color. Uh, so that it looks like that the chicken is one color, which is a lavender Orpington. Her name is Butterbean. is going to be that way. And then she's going to be wearing a colorful sweater of variegated yarn. <laughs> so that's what I'm yes. doing. So you're making yourself and a I'm Orpington. Using... Is that what you said? Yes, a lavender, They're lavender orpington. orpington. Lavender orpingtons are actually that light gray color. And I could explain all the genetics, but you don't want to hear it. So we won't do that. <laughs> Maybe not in this context. <laughs> um, and I'm using the uh, Juniper Moons Farm 14, which uh, it's a, 
it's a, a blend of merino and cashmere, but I just had one skein that I had gotten from something and I thought it's the perfect color for a lavender Arlington. So that's what she's going to be. And hope her sweater is going to be a Franco sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we can say that that it will be, Penny. Yes, yes we can say that it will be. With a few chicken modifications. <laughs> with, with, with modifications to uh, for the chicken body. Yeah, yeah make really sure that chicken sweater has seamless set-in sleeves. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maybe I'll make some little things down on the down on the shoulders so it looks like it. I could do that. I mean, I added extra short rows for the tail. I can do that for yeah. the shoulders. It's no big deal. Um, what are you doing? Wrap and turn short rows. Yes, I was doing just regular, the regular wrap and turn short rows that she suggested, um, not picking up the wraps or anything, but just doing the wrap and turns in garter stitch. Um, that was one that I had seen uh, on some of the YouTube videos before, and I had actually done in some of my swatches uh, when it called for yeah. garter stitch. And I, I, I think they look nice. Mm -hmm. Twisting the wrap and turns makes them a little tighter and tidier, in my opinion. Makes them blend in a bit more with mm -hmm. the garter stitch, wrapping okay. the opposite way that you normally would. So there, there's a and thought. Oh. So it does. Yeah. The, um, mm -hmm. That's what wound up working, pleasing me the most, I guess, because it really mm -hmm. blends in with, but it looks like just another garter stitch bump. It's the same size as a garter stitch bump. Right. Yeah. Well, for around. this, for this yarn, it's a it's a really thick chainette, mm -hmm. and so it kind of like I feel it hides a multitude of errors actually. <laughs> and so it's like okay, it's working fine, and I'm working at just a tiny bit tighter gauge than I would because I didn't want the, none of the stuffing to poke through. Yeah, that's so, the main thing. Did that, yeah. You know. All right, I'm going to go get my now, stuff. Ron, Ron, mm -hmm. wait, can you explain a, just a little bit better what that was you suggested about twisting uh, what you twist when you wrap? Okay, um, so in a regular wrap and turn, the, the yarn just sort of comes around the stitch you're wrapping. Yeah. Yeah, yep. and then you come back and pick it up uh, to make a twisted wrap and turn. I work to where I'm going to work. And then move the yarn the other way. Oh, the, then the other stitch way. Stitch and wrap it. Move the move it back. So oh. between the stitches I've worked and my wrap stitch, the uh, there's a little X. I see. Like a twisted <laughs> stitch. The other way to do that is to do it like a yarn over uh, a, a yarn over short row and mm -hmm. twist the stitch when you pass it over. When you actually do it. Uh, okay. That's so, that's much clearer. Thank you. Sure. Um, I just, I found that when I started putting um, strain on the fabric, it gapped under oh. the first wrap and turns I had. But I also started with the finest gauge chickens. Uh, chickens are only the finest gauge. <laughs> um, um, and so they gapped a little bit. The finest chickens. <laughs> it's my my mm -hmm. band. But 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 also in the in the garter stitch, you weren't picking up the wraps. Um yeah. So that's picking up the wraps is another thing that kind of tight would tighten them if you were actually doing that and stocking it. But but then you'd get double I think it's yeah, I think it shows. Of. I think it shows less uh, to not pick it up in garner stitch. Yeah, substantially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of people do recommend that in garter stitch. Just wrap the stitch, but then don't pick it up when you come back by. Right. Mm -hmm. so my Heather Storna has a lovely video. Is give a twisted wrap a try. <laughs> yeah. Every variation of a stit of a of a short row I could think of, just experimenting with what I thought looks nicest, because I had plenty of opportunity to make plenty of kinds of short rows while knitting all these chickens. In all different sizes and colors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get my stuff in. 
So who else wants to show us what they're working on? I will. So I had to put my my yoke sweater, you know, aside for a while until I got replacement yarn um, because I had run out. So this was the original color, and this is what I got back. Oh, train! And I'm going. Oh my God! I can't do this together. It won't work. Oh. But it does. It really worked super well on the sleeve so far. So you can't even tell that I'm working on you know two different skeins. That all. Oh wow. Up. Oh, I was wow. really surprised on how mm. well it worked. That's remarkable. It is. So I'm yeah. really happy with it. And then I was working on this thing and I'm going, I feel like I on my pattern, I'm getting really far into this thing. And it's not like, why am I, you know, I should be down to here and I'm my, you know, I'm my sleeves up here. I skipped 70 rows. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I'm glad yeah. you're not the oh, only no. one that made mistakes this week. Oh, good boy. Ah. Kathy says she did the same thing. So really? I, I feel good. Is that a problem with the pattern? No, it's a problem with the, the user. <laughs> <laughs> user well, error. Sometimes if the user patterns are not clear, you might, anyway. No, I skipped the whole section because it's, you know, you're talking about your, your um, decreasing for the sleeve. And <laughs> one, one of them says that you do it as a, um, for, what was it? Uh, seven rows and the other one is six rows. And I got them mixed up and I. Oh, oh. That's all. It was as I just totally skipped that one section. So, oh well. <laughs> yeah, oh well, that's right. Hydra. Yes. I was experimenting with how many times I could cast on 99 stitches <laughs> and knit 20 rows in the wrong chart. Oh. oh. <laughs> how many times did it take? Three. Three times. Oh, wow. Out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I persistent and I'm walk the dog, come back. I'm all right. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is after I finally get the yarn in because the designer calculated the wrong amount of skeins for how much I needed for this sweater. Uh oh. So yarn.com rescued me. It came in. I was able to start. Now I'm doing the front right panel. And this is a correct pattern for 99 stitches. Yay. Finally. <laughs> wow. Hold it up again so we can see. So oh, this is this is the um Oh yeah. The matching like border for this. Right. Uh, I don't know if I can do them together, right? Yeah. Matches. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. what I had to change the chart to be correct because the chart was wrong. There was an errata in the chart. Oh. Now what I'm so proud of, and I don't think you can see it, is um, Portuguese knitting the back stitch and then in, like uh, English and continental the front and the stitches are incredibly even. So they proud look of them. very even wow. and lovely. Yeah. All and I'm using three gorgeous. different methods. <laughs> and then my salvage stitch looks like uh, like a crochet chain. Mm. Oh, yeah. Very oh, even. Nice. Oh wow. Considering considering it's, you know, the three different methods. I'm like, right. But I am liking it and I will be able to use this technique. Thank you, Ron. On the baby blanket that I put aside because it has a lot of uh fair aisle, but not traditional paneled fair aisle, not in the round. So Fair Isle squares, which are difficult to manage with the yarn carryover, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it it's worked. So this has been a challenging sweater, but it's it's coming. In, and now I'm 
not going to make the same mistake on the left panel, I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I am going to use grow grain to stabilize the buttonholes. <laughs> You might try Petersham. It has a little bit less roll in it than Grograin. It looks like um, Grograin, but it's not. Oh, okay. So I was going to use... It's called Petersham. Okay. I was going to use a Grograin or Petersham on the button panel that I'm going to sew the buttons mm -hmm. into. And then on the buttonhole panel, I'm going to use thin grow grain down either side of the buttonhole, which will give it stability, but still allow me to knit a buttonhole rather than having to sew buttonholes into grow right. grain and then right. apply them to the Good. sweater. Yeah, yeah, that'll be nice. So, and that should that should work out well. And then I'll probably go back to putting zippers and sweaters again because it's so much easier for me. Well, but it's 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 a different look that you might want and that you want to be able to do sometimes. And yeah, you know, it fits fits some applications better than others. And so you want to be able to do both ways, whatever you need and want. Yeah, and it's why I like joining you guys every week because I learn so much. I think we all do. It's yeah. That I've been telling people how we all learn from each other so much. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, things that I wouldn't normally think to look for, but then now I'll look it up. You know, it's like you don't know the answer to a question until someone asks, because you didn't know the question. Right, you but, didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know, it, you didn't know. For me, it's like, you don't know what you don't know. Right, exactly. <clears throat> I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't. I did not know that I did not know about ladder back and jacquard. Yeah. And so my uh, my week, well, a couple of days of my week were spent uh, editing a video for ladder back jacquard, and I'm really excited about it. It turns out to be a 40 minute video. Um, I I talk about what it is and how to work it one way and then I talk about how to chart it and I show charting it and deciding where to do it and then I talk about all the different variations that I did not show and I show the result of using different variations though I don't show how to do them all because I thought that would just be inordinately long but 40 minutes is pretty long for time for a video in to begin with so um, I'm I'm excited about it. I haven't posted it online yet. I I'm not sure exactly when I'll do that because I'm also writing an article for Cast On Magazine um, describing the technique, and I uh, I may need to wait until the magazine is about to come out before I post the video. I'm not sure. I'll check with Arinda to see what she wants me to do about that. So which uh, version of the magazine is that one coming out in? Uh, the summer issue. It'll come out um, early May, like May 1st. Awesome. <clears throat> and I finished the hat. That was the other thing I did this week. I finished oh, good. the hat and I thought of a name of it, which I can't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, the Jollity hat. Jollity? <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> yes, it's got um, balls and ribbons. And I was calling it the balls and ribbons hat, but that just didn't sound right. <laughs> then I thought about the festivity hat or the fiesta hat or the jubilation hat. or Then I came up with Jollity. So it's going to be called the Jollity hat. Like paint colors, right? <laughs> What's that? It's just like paint colors, yeah. you know, <laughs> trying to pick all these names for patterns. 
That's right. So that they're searchable. Well, well, Ravelry this week uh, put an upgrade for that hat. She changed it. Upgrade to what? She upgraded the Munzenberg hat. Oh, this is not a Musselberg hat. Uh, yeah, yeah, but Ravelry yeah, emailed but, me. And, yeah, so there's a new version yeah. of it. There's a new version. Yeah, of a new it? version of it. She added something to it. So. Oh, well, that's what I'm working on here. It's the muscle. Yeah. You know, I've been working on it in my spare time for several weeks now. It's... Um, she said she hadn't changed the. There was no corrections to the patterns. What it mm -hmm. was, there's like a coloring page and. Yeah, information about how to like make stripes and change and and do different things like that. So mm -hmm. the the regular pattern part, if you're knitting it, she said yeah, just fine, just keep going. Yeah. That's all the same. Mm -hmm. I think I already showed you um, the the hat. Um, in different colors. Let me go ahead and talk among yourselves. Let me see if I can bring up some pictures of the of, of this hat. I stuffed my chicken. <laughs> Does any, oh yay! I like that one. There it is. That's Stubner. big blue, isn't it? Yeah. So in, in French, what is the double knit? Uh, a double knit. A double in French. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean a play. Uh, a plain knit is is just a knit stitch, one stitch. But what is a double knit? I would think it depends on whether it's French or Canadian or French French. I well, would think no, it's still gonna. Well, the book was from Pujol, so which is French. from France. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, oh. I don't know a French pattern. Uh, that, yeah, because the language doesn't translate literally. Okay. Um, Judith, do you have a translation for double knit? I, I wouldn't. No, I can go upstairs and see if I can find something in my book. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be back. Because I don't know how you would describe it. So is it yeah. say in translation, double well, knit? One of, one of my friends has a cousin in France and she, and he, she put the, the French book over there. He translated it but when he wrote it back, he said there were things there that he just did not understand how how it meant, what it meant. Because like when they did the decreases in the armpits, he said one by two, two by three, one by four, mm -hmm. all across. And I'm saying, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. And, and when they are, yeah, when they're like doing that. when they're doing the the pattern, it says you know. You're gonna do a plain knit, which they, I'm assuming is nest and knit. But then he says every six stitch you do a double knit. I'm like, okay, what's the double knit? Like, what, could it be like one below? Uh, I, or could it be an increase? It it yeah, almost it could almost well, be. Well, I mean, looking at the numbers, it doesn't increase it at all. So you know. Oh, so, so it's I, not an increase. No. But even in English, double knit means different things. Yeah, it does. I, right. You know, so you know. you'd have to you'd have to look. I funny enough, I did an Aust Austrian cable knit sweater. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that doesn't translate very well either. Let me no, tell you. I see. Um, yeah. It it took some tries to figure, oh, that's what they mean. And it was yeah. it was something so simple like what we would call a cable two back. Yeah. And and they just don't so. See. Now I'm better at charting, so now I could look at a chart and do it. But I'm still not where I want to be with charting. I'm um, I'm a novice when it comes to charting. Just to yeah. begin. Well, they all say it's easier to read it than to write write it out. So yeah. As far as I could find. <laughs> Okay. There's the textile industry. A double knit fabric is referred to as double tof. Okay. Double tof. Whether that holds to the technique when done in hand knitting, 
couldn't say, but I'm not coming yeah. up with anything else in my dictionary. How, how, do, how do you spell the second part? Double what? E-T-O-F-F-E. Etof. Double etof. Etof, yeah. It means, etof would, I would translate it as fabric. Etof, so. Yeah. Okay, double etof. Cognate of the English word stuff. <laughs> yeah. Everything well, brings like us Thursday. back to the chicken. The chickens. <laughs> I, no, like... I posted a good. I posted two things in the yeah. chat that were um French um knitting terms, French to English knitting terms. I posted two things there. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I don't know if it has anything that you need to know, but yeah. Yeah, that, that French word that means material is mm -hmm. where we get the English word stuff. That means just like miscellaneous stuff. Because mm. it just used to mean fabrics in English too. Mm. So if someone said, have you got the stuff? They meant fabric. <laughs> and then it underwent a semantic shift. And now it just means stuff in general, not just fabric. No, that's funny. But it literally, mm. it's hoof and stuff are the same word. Oh. No, oh, that's funny. Um, and that's what a few years of graduate school will get you. <laughs> I love the etymology of like language and terms and like where stuff, where things come from, you know? Mm. Well, it's hard to have like oh, an etymology of post or bricks. Language is Cindy, did like you that. find two different French knitting dictionaries online? I, I did, and and one just has a few terms, but they did seem to explain a little bit about the, um, what he was saying, like one by two, two by three, whatever. Right. Um, it talks about that that's the way they denote increases and decreases, that you'll find first the number of times to repeat the action, and the next is the number of stitches concerned by this action. And it, it then in the little uh, website, it it explains what that would be at, in English. Oh. And then the other one has mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> more has different, it kind of has just little terms of what it is that it would be. Of F-A-C-I-L-E, mm. and I'm not going to pronounce it because I have no idea how that is, Fasty. what that means, but it <laughs> but it's but it means easy. Facile. Okay. Trying to look at Facile. 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 It, it means that it's easy. Yeah. Right. Right. Facile. So the way I knew that Cindy knew two dictionaries is she put them in chat. <laughs> so, yeah, I did put it in so chat. I will so there's try to two. remember to put those two links in the description under this video. Well, uh, I did find my pictures, so. Oh, good, yay. So that. Oh, wow. So I cool. love the band. Yeah. Oh, wow. Going yeah. Oh, oh. That's I love cool. the band. There. Oh, how nice. That's the back. That's mm. brilliant. Yeah. And so this this is the pattern for doing the jacquard, practicing the jacquard or That's using right. the jacquard. Oh, that is, it's so cool. That's beautiful. And, you know, they're high <laughs> contrast yarns, and yet you see almost no peek through, just a little tiny. Yeah, hardly any. There. It's it's really, really good. How did you do that band? Did you just alternate in color work? That is um, uh, helical knitted um, in one by one ribbing. That's all. Wow. wow I love it. Cast on with one color, yeah. and then I added a second color on the first round, and then I did helical from then on until the band was complete. Oh, that's brilliant. Very nice. It's very nice. It's really nice. 
Yeah, I've never done helical knitting. That's really neat. Oh, it's really simple. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah, did it in the 1930s style? What's that? I said it looks like a 1930s style hat. Mm. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looks, really... like it, should, it, it looks like it should be on a model of Sax, Sax Fifth Avenue. <laughs> yeah, it's going to yeah. be a thousand dollar hat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anybody want to buy it? It's in the <laughs> <laughs> Take a Someone would. I'll show what I'm working on. So a, a few months ago, somebody in the group, and I can't remember who, was doing the um, seaside tea t-shirt. And so um, I love the look of that, so I'm having a go. So I'll just show you where I am. So this is my seaside tea. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice. Mm. Ooh. Mm, so great got, colors. Yeah. Split off for the... And where's my sleeves gone? Yeah, so we split off for the sleeves. Um, and it's a uh, saddle shoulder. So that's the... Hard to see because of the patterning. But that's oh, the no, um, saddle shoulder. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh. Very nice. Mm. And then... Um, the, you've got the line of increases, the raglan increases down, and then it goes under the arm. It's hard to see because of the, the, the patterning. And then the, the yarn, this is um, it's 30, no, 20 mini skeins of 20 grams each. And oh, so, wow. oh my goodness, uh, wow. like a fade. So, it will, you can see it's, it's bluer at the top. Yes. And then mm -hmm. it's coming down to pink. Um, and then I think it goes uh, to green, I think, at some point. I don't know. I don't know when. So because I'm doing the sleeves matching, at the moment I'm at the stage where I'm weighing the yarn to, to, work, to work out how many rows to do on the body and then the same number of rows on each sleeve mm -hmm. so that the sleeve will match the body on the way down. Uh. Um, and I'll carry on doing that until I think I'm only going to have um, short sleeves up to here, I think. Um, but I'll see as I carry on down. But um, and I, I bought the yarn at a um, festival several years ago, so I've no idea what it is. It feels like sock yarn, so I think it's um, merino and nylon because it feels like that. Uh, but it's lovely to knit with, really nice to knit with. Very very tightly twisted, so it's a lovely smooth fabric that's coming up. Really pleased with it. Sounds really stuff great. By your swift. Looks like you got a large bludgeon there. Yeah, I thought it was a shillelagh. <laughs> oh, what it is. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> so okay. don't, don't annoy me because I'll. It was a bludgeon. <laughs> well spotted me. <laughs> I thought surely there's an explanation. She just doesn't. Yeah. Have a club sitting by. Oh no, she does. She does, in yeah. fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. never know when someone will need a good whack. I get it. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, and I have my sword in the other room as well. So. <laughs> in case the good whack does not improve things. So I knock them out and then stab them. That, you know, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't annoy me. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I forgot to mention that the hat that I just showed you was done in Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. Oh. Um, I found was a really nice wool. That is a nice shirt. Sturdy wood, wool for a hat. It would make a very warm sweater also. Um mm which is why I won't use it to make a sweater because I live in San Francisco and I don't need one that warm. But it's nice yarn. When you visit Kathy, you would need it. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that, that just thinking of that, Berico has this absolutely gorgeous baby alpaca, but it's it's a worsted weight, and that would be like an oven. Mm. <laughs> you could wear it like one day a year, maybe, you know. <laughs> And but oh my, it just to touch it, it's just gorgeous. But uh, wow, that would be one hot sweater. If you give blood in the middle of winter, <laughs> maybe that. blood. Yeah. And like I wear warm sweaters up here. I wear loppy, you know. Yeah. It, but that would be just too much. I'm getting a little schwitzy from holding the chickens, so. <laughs> <laughs> Judith, I'm, I'm, what are you two working on? Who, who wants to go first? Me. Who? I have nothing to show this week. I, I've started a scarf, so. <laughs> well, I won't spotlight you for that little tiny piece. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> about you, Wally? I'm doing the band on my crochet sweater. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. And I ran out of yarn, and uh, they don't make it anymore, so I found this gray, and I kind of liked it, so I put it in. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. So. <clears throat> It was a friend she used to knit with us years ago, and she was such a tight knitter that she made her husband a sweater, and the thing was so tight and thick that he said, sell it to Alaskans. <laughs> and he, he said he couldn't even wear it. It was so hot. <laughs> so. so do you follow a written crochet pattern? Or a charted crochet pattern? This is a written crochet pattern, yeah. It's from Leisure Arts. All right, okay. So it's a very old book. So yeah. I mean, they have, what, six six sweaters, but they're, the pattern's always the same. It's uh, double crochet and uh, single crochet. So. Someone that um, I was talking to was talking about like a crochet knit. And I'm like, I've never heard of it, but it's like a cross between crochet and knitting. And I'm like, yeah, what is, I have no idea. Some um, people refer to Tunisian crochet that way. Tunisian, yeah, people Tunisian crochet. With, but I was thinking knit with maybe Tunisian. So I mentioned Tunisian, and she said, no, they modified a Tunisian hook. Like, okay. Hmm. I, I can't imagine. I mean, not that you can't invent something new, but... Um, there are many places where knitting is traditionally done with hooks, with hooked needles. Yeah. It, is a, it, um, it was the, the they came they, out. They traditionally knit with hooked needles. Oh. Because when you think, is it the prim ones that have like, they're, they're not hooked, but they Yeah, got they got like, a little teardrop. <laughs> little yeah, teardrop, so no. Similar, yeah. just but with a hook on the end rather than I a love on the end. training new, new knitters with those because the stitches don't fall off the tip. Yeah. It's e easier for them to like put it on and not like be so nervous yeah. about them falling off. <laughs> That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing this week, Cindy. I've been practicing keeping my knitting on the tips of my needle. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, that's that that's rough. <laughs> yeah. Have you found it improved your tension? Yes. It's gotten tighter. Oh. So. Well, I meant more even as it hits. Oh, yeah, it's more even and it's kind of easier to do. So, 
Mm-hmm. I think my next step is to sit on a chair and not in a, in a lounge chair because everything is, you know, you're slouching and you're doing all this other stuff, which we shouldn't yeah. be doing. So I do better in a straight back chair or my yeah, office same. chair. Yeah. Yeah. And you always see a lot of people who are demonstrating knitting. They're sitting at a table. Ron, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you sit at a table and knit all the time? No? Oh, all right. I sit on my sofa. Or right. Sometimes I'm at my table in the other room. But mm -hmm. if I'm at home, I'm horizontal. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I so, always sit at a table. All right. I always sit See? at a table. Yeah. And you and you you do your elbows on the table? No, I have um a chair with with arms. And okay. so my elbows are on the on on the arms of the chair. But um a lot of times I'm scooted up far enough to the table that the the knitting, the weight of it is supported on the table. Mm. Yeah. When I do color work, do color I'm work. definitely right at a table. Right at the table. Mm. All right. See? Mm. All these little tips we need. When I do a video, so when I make a video, I'm sitting at a table. At the table, video, yeah. On the table. But it's only for the purpose of the video, so you can yeah. see the knitting better. Um, normally, I just yeah. hold it down in my lap, like I'm doing now. See, I have to look yeah. up for you to even see it in the screen. Yeah. The screen. I hold it so low. But, and because they say that's the worst thing to do, because it puts strain on our necks yes we're looking down yeah. oh so that's why i often i'm in a recliner and i'm back like this yeah <laughs> like 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 jenny's in the recliner and every time she gets tired of knitting she goes to sleep like i do <laughs> <laughs> i just pull it back and say this is it we're done well, sometimes I have a little pillow in my lap, too, that yeah. lifts up my knitting okay. so that my arms are more kind of at a 90 degree angle yeah. mm -hmm. rather than way down. That's what I do, too, especially when the knitting is getting heavier mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, it, the, uh, the distance is not okay uh, between your hands and your lap so a cushion mm -hmm. helps yeah. <clears throat> well you're very you're very polite that you use a cushion i use one of those funny little squish mellow stuffed animals that the kids have <laughs> <laughs> it's cheap we have a, several of them here that the grandkids play with and it's the right size and shape and so i just put it on my lap and put my knitting on top yeah. <laughs> why not they advertise those a lot on on facebook you know like the the ones that you would use for like nursing the the pillow that goes around your your oh, yeah, the boppy, boppy. The boppy yeah the boppy pillow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, the ads with the bolari pillow yeah basically it, yeah the boppy bolari whatever it is yeah yeah they're great we have like five I'd they're like more to firm than them. a boppy the bolaris oh. Yeah. So it's worth it to maybe get one, huh? <laughs> I I love my Volari pillow. It's really versatile. You can use it for anything. Ron's mother saw mine and basically stole it from me and was like, I need this. When I'm sitting in my chair, I don't know what to do with my arms. And now I can rest my arms comfortably. Exactly. It's, That's it. I like it. Because I'm finding my knitting going anywhere from here to here. I mean, it's like, yeah. up like this. <laughs> <and down. laughs> Mm -hmm. Ron, can you spell that in the chat? The name of the um, cushion? And while I was looking on my phone just now, I found some tutorials for something called crow hooking or crow knitting. There you go. That the yeah. descriptions insisted were not Tunisian crochet, but look an awful lot to me like a two-color yes. Tunisian crochet. Uh, it it kind of sounded like Tunisian crochet with what she was telling me, and I don't I don't know how to do Tunisian crochet. I would love to know how to do it. But just to talk to you and I'm like, mm, I think that's Tunisian crochet. But she insisted it wasn't. I'm like, I I don't know enough to argue with you. So Tunisian or, crochet is not that hard, Sam. Big Newtons aren't cookies, they're fruit and cake. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's correct. Well, and I'm from, and I am from Massachusetts. It is our state cookie. <laughs> it's yeah. our state fruit and cake, sir. Yes. <laughs> well, and Boston cream pie is not a pie. That's that's that is okay. very true. Okay, and in the chat, on the I I already I just put it in. I went to the Polari homepage. I, oh, I don't I know why it's so Angela. long, but it did. You sent the same okay. one. I'm deleting mine. Okay, okay. I might Thank pick you. one up for myself. They come Thank recommended. You. They are very much like a boppy pillow, like a nursing pillow or a uh -huh. baby holding pillow, but uh -huh. um, they are more firm. When you take okay. them out of the package, they're kind of floopy because they're like a memory foam that needs some time. Okay. Uh -huh. Once they're poofed up, like if you get one and take it out of the package and be like, what were they talking about? Look at this scrungly thing. Mm. In a day, <laughs> they're 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 really supportive. Um in fact, I use mine in bed sometime around the back of me. Yes. Not but yes. reading the book just to get a uh -huh. little leverage. Uh -huh. um, Neat. So. Yeah, when um, I got mine, it was super deflated. And then I found that it's the easiest to put them into the like sleeve that they're supposed to be in when you first get them. Because once they poof up and are ready to go, <laughs> it's really hard to get them in there. Mm -hmm. so. Um, and they have a few different kinds of covers. Um, but yeah, the Facebook ads got me. And I was like, hmm, I'll get one of these for 10. He has notoriously bad posture. Hmm. <laughs> 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 no, I, I got the bra with us. Um, <laughs> and then my parents took ours. <laughs> our, oh, our that's time. amazing. Oh, I love it. All went up to their place at the end of the year and then like I had one and Tim had his with him and they stayed there. <laughs> my my mother took one to use and she's like, can I keep this? I'm like, we're clearly not gonna tell you no, mother. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then my dad came and took it from her. Yeah. So she had to take another one. So oh, that's like, funny. The great the great chain of being <laughs> um, is what it is. So now I got, I got one for everyone who lives in our house. All all four of our our housemates. <laughs> Just like ah. here's your pillow, here's your pillow, here's your pillow. Video games, crochet, reading, anything a grown man does. <laughs> <laughs> Squishmallows are good too. My Squishmallow Snorlax. That is fun. <laughs> So how long are you in North South Carolina? Just a couple of days. I let's see. I came. Um, did I come yesterday? I came. <laughs> today is Saturday. <laughs> I've completely <laughs> lost track of the days. Yes, I traveled all day yesterday to get here, and oh, wow. and so I'll be here today, tomorrow, and Monday, and then I go back home on Tuesday. It's clearly too warm, and you've become what kind of southern food yes. are we gonna? <laughs> I'm sorry, Wally. What? What kind of southern food are we going to eat? Oh my God! I had the most wonderful lunch I had. <laughs> um, uh, crab hush puppies to start. Oh, oh stop it! Oh, look at this! And <laughs> um, a fried chicken sandwich with um, peach compote in it and melted blue cheese. Oh and wow! This and tomato. Oh, gosh. Look at that. So um, you're really suffering. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah, right? unbelievable. And then um, my friend Mike said, well, we have to have the donuts because they make them to order. And mm. so we put in an order for donut, the donuts and they brought us four donuts that were warm and glazed and the glaze was just dripping all over the plate. Oh, God. Come on. Are you like two about bites me? of the donut after all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't stay here longer than four days or else I'll gain like 600 pounds. <laughs> you got to go out and get some shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. Yes, I. Yeah. He had grits with his uh, brunch. Brunch, and yeah. I had to taste those, and they are like, 
I miss grits so much because I grew up. I do. Yeah. I like grits. Can't get grit, good grits anywhere else. Yeah. These were just awesome. Stone ground. Yeah, because they, grits. they put bacon fat in it and make it better. <laughs> they do something. Yes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> so that's Southern cuisine at its finest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it looks like it's about that time to say goodbye for another week. And it was really nice to see you all again. Anybody have any last word? Have a safe week. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.